How, how difficult was it when you and Casper decided to part company? Um, it was, the way it was for the first couple of years, Casper, if you don't know him, he's very much, if, he's sort of much more of an ideas person. So he has a million ideas a minute, which is one of the reasons why the business sort of went like that for the first couple of years. But he very much lived and breathed it entirely. So he was doing like 100 hours a week and making me feel guilty at doing sort of 60 or 70, even though I'd just got married and all this kind of stuff going on. And he did that for a couple of years, and then he sort of just naturally started to burn out a bit. Um, but he'd very much been the face of it. So the prospect of him leaving at that, when we first started talking about it, was a bit scary, but we started to identify the, re the really important gap that we needed to fill. And that was, we realized to grow it, that was in marketing. Um, and so before Casper made the decision to leave, uh, we brought Nick in, uh, Nick Imry, who'd come from um, working with the Leighton Group and DomainNames.com, being head of marketing for, um, for the guys who bought, who bought them out, VeriSign. So a lot of experience. Um, and we grew quite rapidly after that. I mean, Nick joined us in, I think, February, March time, and there was about four of us. And by that summer, there was sort of 12 of us. Um, and we were finding the work, and it was coming in. That made, that made for a much more sort of sustainable business. But the partnering was completely amicable. I'm still good mates with Casper and see him and... and if you go on Facebook, you'll see the abuse he sends me every day. But we get on very well. But he, he wanted out, and it was very obvious that one of us it was going to split at some point. OK, then, Tony. Rob. Sorry, yeah. Rob, I was, because I was thinking about Tony. Yeah. <laughs> because I was no, thinking, OK, <laughs> do you want Tony to leave the room for a few minutes? <laughs> uh, you know, how, how, how has the partnership worked? How, is, how does it? Um, do you continue to get on? Do you continue to work well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean... Can't say anything else though, really, can you? <laughs> so <I saw> ben. <laughs> ben. <laughs> it's funny because I'm probably a bit more like Casper in our business. It's me that kind of, I don't know, I live it all the time. And I think it's probably a bit hard on some of the other guys that that is the case. And you do have the odd day where something will just spark off, maybe an argument or a debate about something that someone doesn't necessarily agree with or whatever. But you, you need that. I think it's very important because you can get your blinkers on. Like I saying, I'm quite a little bit more like Casper, so I live and breathe and therefore think I'm always right. Mm. And I'm probably not. And I'm sure Tony will sit there and tell you I'm not. not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you need someone to slap you a little bit and sort of like make you realise that there's other perspectives on things as well, uh, which is absolutely crucial. And for you, Ben, you know, Chris was kind of integral in the business right from, yeah. the, from the word go. Mm -hmm. You know, you were a team of four, you're now a team the of three. Four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you're now a team of three, and yep. how, how's, how have you coped with that? Um, it's, it was, it's, it's been quite tough in a way, although actually it's been quite a, a steady progression. Um, we, we'd all worked with each other before we started off the business, and then obviously we'd gone 10 years through the business, and Chris Rickaby just um, actually just exited at, at Christmas. And, um, it wasn't like it was a bolt out of the blue. Um, Chris has been in, uh, a writer. That, that was part of his creative talent that he brought to um, the, the, the company from, from day one. And he developed um, a dual uh, career also in writing screenplays and, uh, and um, novels. And that career has been taken off for him in the last three years. And he felt he faced a choice of making a choice between doing both or doing one. And after 10 years in the business, he decided that um, as the writing career was, was taking off to such a degree, he would give that his full attention. So he was very much chasing his dream. And we've known about that really over the course of the last three years. Uh, but Chris being the great guy that he is, you know, we were constantly in conversation and we accommodated the business and he took more of a back ste step in uh, back seat in the business progressively over the, the course of the last three years. So that when it came to the point that he finally uh, announced that he was definitely intending to leave, 
um, we were able then to accommodate it so it wasn't a huge shock and, and turmoil to the business. Although I'm sure that a number of the staff would have noticed that it was playing more and more of a back seat and were wondering how that might, you know, where that was going to go and there'd be concerns that whether or not we would lose momentum. But by gradually pairing Chris back and, and using him more sparingly in the business, we, we minimised the impact uh, uh, moving forward. And moving forward, where to? What, I mean, Sam, obviously you've already been through the experience. Do you feel as though you've, you've let it go? Um, no, I mean, the, f the decision we made pretty quick, to be honest, in terms of once they, uh, we weren't for sale, but as I said at the beginning, there was always, there was always an exit planned. Um, and it was, a, it was an opportunity to sort of see our business plan, get, a bit, get fast tracked and leave something that was going to be there um, sort of in, as part of this big old PLC. So it was, and it was something that I'd never done before. I'd never worked, Nick had worked for big organisations because he'd been through a uh, company sale before, but I'd never worked for anybody really for any length of time. So it was quite an interesting um, experiment. Part of the deal was that we had to stay for two years and, and that two years comes to an end this summer. Um, you do naturally lose some of the entrepreneurial ability if you like, because even though they, they sort of let you run as a, as a sort of unit within a big organisation, you've still got to answer to a board and you still have to meet with the big board every month and justify decisions you're making and talk about the P&L and, and they've also got their bigger master plan that you have to sort of try and fit in with. Um, so you do, you do give up some control, but that's what you give up when you sell your business. You know, I didn't sell it expecting to be nothing to change. That would have been, that would have been really naive, I think. We sold it and were quite surprised for the first year or so how much freedom we had until Tenops' sort of master plan starts to move and they start to shake up the whole, the whole group and we find ourselves being slotted into different positions. But that's sort of natural. So it's been, a, it's been quite a roller coaster and I've learned a lot doing the whole journey. So I know that the next thing that I do, so that we set up and, and do, will take a lot of those lessons into that. And Rob, for, for you, is the ultimate What's the ultimate aim, with, particularly with Tipstar? Um, well, we'd, we originally planned for, we wanted a buyout within three years. Um, I think we've discovered since then that that's, it's not that simple. There's a lot more work that's got to go into it. Um, and we've also discovered that the one downside to having a web company and um, a product that shares the same uh, staff is that trying to sell a business that shares the same resource becomes very, very hard because all your knowledge is tied into one particular person or the skills around that person. So what you have to do is grow the businesses to separate, which actually is going to take us a couple more years before we can do that. And, you know, 26 years on since from, from when Robson Brown started, is it going to be another 15 years before you decide to cash in and hang up your boots? Or, you know, what, you know where, where would you like to take it? Where, would, where do you see the ultimate... The ultimate? 26 years is a bit of a sobering thought, Steve, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, we're not ready to um, ha hang it up for the pipe and slippers yet. Um, where, where we see ourselves at is um, at the next phase in, 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 in our development. So for us, it's very much the entrepreneurial spirit needs to come back to take us to the, to the next level. Um, you know, obviously, recession is very, very hard for the reasons that I outlined and the guys have outlined, outlined before, but also you, you can see an opportunity there. and. Um, you, you tend to learn more about yourselves in periods of adversity than when things are going brilliantly because you question yourself more in terms of how things could be going forward. Um, and so those, those things like the opportunities that technology is um, presenting and finding new ways of offering services that do what you did better, I think are really, really exciting for us. And so what we want to do is um, take more share in the northeast of England than we've got at the moment and also to expand our geographic catchment. We, we handle business outside the region, which is quite well known, um, where we can compete with, on price with, with, um, with other competitors in order to build ourselves into a, a bigger animal, but without losing um, our principles of being an admired business. And um, we're not quite ready to relinquish that control just yet. Excellent.